For years, many experts have believed the world would become dangerously overpopulated. They predicted the population would be like a ticking bomb. It's only a matter of time until we're all going to starve. Not too long ago, this prediction spread like crazy, and some extremely shady stuff went down. More on that later. But the thing is, the predictions never came true. We're still here. We didn't all starve. Instead of this... Please, sir. I want some more. We got this. <laughs> so how did some of the brightest minds manage to get things so wrong? Our story starts in the 1960s. The population just hit 3 billion people, and that made some people very nervous. How could a world of 4, 5, or even 6 billion people feed itself? Many experts were convinced it couldn't. A slew of books from leading scientists and researchers warned against the dangers of rapid population growth. The most famous of these books was The Population Bomb, a book by Stanford biologist Paul Ehrlich. Ehrlich's prediction seemed reasonable enough. The population was growing really fast, and it didn't seem like food supplies could keep up. In effect, we were all screwed. Ehrlich took aim at India, which he was confident would never be able to feed itself. He thought they were so far gone, we should probably just let them starve. Ehrlich's book sold millions of copies, and overpopulation fears became mainstream. The media ran with it. Politicians believed it. It launched a new wave of activism and even filtered into popular culture. Soylent Green, a dystopian film starring Charlton Heston, takes place in an overpopulated future where people resort to eating mysterious food rations that it turns out were actually made of... People! But it didn't stop there. Ehrlich's book made him quite the celebrity. He went on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson over 20 times, and things got weird. You have to get the death rate and birth rate in balance, and there's only two ways to do it. One is to bring the birth rate down, the other is to push the death rate up. Then things got real. Some countries took action. In an effort to control its population, the Indian government forcibly sterilized millions of people. China adopted a one-child policy. It became illegal for parents to have more than one child. And unauthorized pregnancies could be terminated by Chinese officials. And that's neither pro-life nor pro-choice. But wait a second. Today, the population is over 7 billion people. We didn't all starve. So what happened? Well, this guy happened, Norman Burlock. You might not have heard of him, but he's kind of one of the greatest human beings who's ever lived. Norman was a biologist who invented a new strain of wheat that even in the harshest climates was up to four times more productive than wheat had ever been before. Norman took his wheat to India, and in just a few years, not only were they producing enough food for themselves, they were actually exporting food to other countries. In fact, in 1968, India issued a national stamp celebrating their wheat revolution. Now that is the very same year Ehrlich published The Population Bomb, in which he declared that India would never be able to feed itself. Norman's innovation had spread so fast that it had solved the problem Ehrlich was writing about before the ink had even dried. Defying the predictions, Norman's wheat gave the world food supply a tremendous boost, propelling it past the growth of the world's population. This quantum leap in agriculture is known as the Green Revolution, and it's responsible for diffusing the population bomb. Norman was awarded the Nobel Prize and is credited with saving a billion lives from starvation. The experts who predicted a population bomb their models didn't come close to anticipating how dramatic a change the Green Revolution would be. And that's why their predictions that we were all gonna starve turned out to be wrong. <laughs>